Welcome back, Tribe. Have one here from a very small channel. I am Regis. Again, this one I haven't watched. It's only five minutes. Be inspired by the old miserable co-workers. And he got 20k views on it already. So let's, we'll help give this man a boost. Maybe change his life. And uh, let's see what he's got to say. Appreciate you guys, by the way, submitting videos like this. What up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel. Like and subscribe if you're new. Now, today we're going to be talking about why we need to be inspired by people that we work with, especially the older people. And that's really who we want to be inspired from mostly. Uh, people in our workforce, the ones that are older, the ones that have been there for a long ass time, the ones that have been there for 17 years working in the, in the warehouse. Currently, I work in a warehouse right now. I work at OKQ. If you're watching this in a different city uh, or state, uh, you will probably, maybe you have an LKQ out there, but that don't really matter. But what I was thinking about is that sometimes we get caught up in like who we work with and we identify as just another employee that works there. <laughs> but once you realize that you got a mission and when you realize that there is a goal outside of this workplace, you have to really be able to fuel that fire with the people that are working around you that have been in the same position for 15 years. They've been working the same dead-end job. You're making damn near just as much as them, and they've been here for 15 years, 10 years, 20 years, you know what I mean? And they, and they haven't even, some some of them haven't even moved up the corporate ladder. They've been just working their regular position, or they might have switched around. Those are the people that you got to be inspired by in order, and then tell yourself, I'm not going to be like them because mm -hmm. if you don't push yourself, if you don't push yourself towards your goals, oh, let me take a sip of my coffee real quick. If you don't push yourself towards your goals, even at your workspace, you're going to find yourself damn near being stuck in the same loop. If you don't put no motion towards nothing, you're going to be damn near stuck on what you've been doing. You're going to be constantly just, all right, I'm working here. I'm around these people. Next thing you know, they'll go one year. Next thing you know, they'll go two years. Next thing you know, they'll go three years because you've just been working. Or you might have switched jobs. Mm -hmm. You might have, it, 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 it don't even matter if you. Yeah, time flies, bro. When you get comfortable and you get into that routine of just showing up, getting paid, leaving, you decompress, go at home, play video games, ball with the boys, something like that. All right, go out when you can afford it every once in a while. And like you get caught in this like trap. I was feeling that too before I decided I needed a giant change in my life and moved halfway across the country. It was the same routine that I got stuck in because of it was familiarity and comfort and just looking at my coworkers, bro. I got guys 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 year old general manager, and he's been with the company for decades and he's making shit pay and always bitching about, you know, how hard it is and struggling and corporate stressing him out and blah. And I'm like, dude, is this all there is to life? Like, this is what being an adult is like. I can't my life can't be this. There has to be something better. Like, I have to escape the rat race. Because this shit is for the birds. This guy went to college. He got a four-year degree at some whatever college anyways. And it landed him a job of being a fucking general manager at some retail store. Just moving with the motions, dude. Up and down. Going in. Taking his lunch break. Garbage lunch. Going back in. Yelling at customers. Getting yelled at. Yelling at employees. Getting yelled at by district managers. Blah and on. Bro, it's just vicious. Soul-sucking existence. If that shit doesn't inspire you to do anything you can to escape the rat race, I don't even know what else it would take for you to hit that rock bottom. Because working around people like that, those lifers at companies, is the scariest shit. It's like a peek into the future of what you're going to end up if you don't make drastic investments in yourself. It's scary, man. With your job, anybody that you're working around, pay attention to who you work with and, and like really just analyze uh like other people's mistakes, because at the end of the day, the people that do work at these jobs for 15 years, 10 years, and they haven't moved up the corporate ladder, at least to get like a significant pay raise or something like that. Most of the time, them people is struggling. Most of the time, they is stressed out, miserable. Let me, let me flip my hat so I can see my face. Most of the time, bro, them people is stressed out, miserable, bro. They don't like what they're doing. 
They just doing this shit to get by. And then, I mean, when you a young person that's working in like a, one of these type of jobs, like a warehouse, or you just working around older people and they, and you kind of making the same type of competitive pay as them or damn near the same exact thing. Deep down, they really don't, they really don't like that. They more insecure about it because they realizing, damn, this young person, they've been working here. They, they work it here now. I'm, st- I'm, I'm where they, they start where I, and I'm still in the same spot from where they started 15 years later, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't really feel good about that. And if you don't put some type of emotion to even the littlest thing, like nobody said that your life is going to change overnight. Or of course it ain't going to change overnight unless something like crazy lucky happened. Like you hit the lottery or you get some like crazy big shout out or win some giveaway or some whatever the fuck. But yeah, bro, you got to at least put a little bit of motion into something. That's why I'm even putting effort into making this content that I'm making now, putting these videos out there. Mm-hmm. Um, just really kind of getting myself out there and shit. You know what I mean? It's Never a little helped. bit of motion, baby steps, a little bit at a time. And if you don't, even whatever you, whatever you, you find that you want your niche to be, start putting motion into that. Start expanding outside of this work shit. And then you're going to really realize that mm-hmm. you got a bigger picture going on and you're not going to be like these same motherfuckers that's out here. Uh, I think my manager walking over to me now. I don't know why. But you're going, you're not going to be in the same position as these motherfuckers, bro. If you stick to your shit, <laughs> feel me? Get back to work, bro. We ain't paying you to fucking make YouTube videos. <laughs> Manager about to rip his ass. <laughs> wow. Look at a little. I really just wanted to get this message out there. Cut it short, homie. Shaming anybody who in the workforce. Or if you are older and you still happen to watch this, it ain't no shame. But I'm just saying, man, keep your eyes on the bigger picture. And realize that you don't want to be like the typical motherfuckers that have been working here for 15 years. Yeah. You're going to be sad as fuck when that time come around and you realize that we'll be doing the same shit. How do you think these motherfuckers is still there all this time? That's because they just kind of fell into the trap, especially the older generation. That motherfuckers be stuck in that work, work, work mindset. They don't even really be trying to expand. They just... Work, just pay the bills, provide. They don't, most of them don't really look for nothing bigger. And that's why they be stuck. Some of them motherfuckers be stuck miserable. So yeah, bro. That's all I got to say. And I'm going to just catch up, boys in the next video. Peace. And some of them got lucky because they actually, even with the shitty job and pay they had, they, they caught it really well when they bought their houses for cheap. So it's like these people are just sustaining a very, mm-hmm, you know, middle of the road, humble lifestyle. They own their car. It's a beater. They own their house. They bought it way, way long time ago. It's paid off by now. So all the things that are crushing young people today, where they're coming into workplace, making the same money as say the 60 year old, it's just, it's not applicable because look at the average cost of rent. It's over 200 now. Median rent is over 2000, excuse me. Um, cars now, the average payment has ballooned to 700 a month. And there's going to be people that say, yeah, but dang, you don't have to spend money on it. It's like, where, what do you want to do, bro? You need to be somewhere remotely close to work. Drive there in, let's just say, one hour and a half each way. That's already a fucking ton of commuting time. Then what do you want me to do? Split a bedroom with like a sheet curtain? Because that's the only way you're going to get a place for like 600, 700. It's splitting a room with somebody. That's, that's squalor conditions, bro. Get the fuck out of here. So renting a place is already, even in a bad part of town, like twelve hundred, fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks. What? Anything decent is two thousand and up. Then you got inflation in general, like gas, groceries, all that shit costs so much more today in relation to the paycheck. It's not easy, man. It really isn't. And it's I don't know if it's gonna get easier anytime soon. I mean, I know America's favorite just got elected, but it takes far more than four years to turn around the machine that's been going downhill for decades, for 50 plus 60 years. You know, the swamp creatures, the special interests, the lobby groups, you know, the outside political influences from the international world. I mean, there's a lot that needs to be cleaned up. It's just not enough time in four years. Maybe you can get the ball rolling and maybe good times are coming, but we're in for a lot of pain, guys. Just know that, you know, the job market, the economy in general, the interest our government is paying over $1 trillion in interest alone. I think it's like the first time ever.
that the payments have ballooned up that high. The dollar's value is being debased right before our very eyes. We see it in all the things that we're purchasing today. And the house, the house of cards is going to come crashing down probably in the next year or so. <sighs> I don't know. I'm always hopeful because we have no choice. So I know there's some guys that are just like, well, let it all burn and let's restart over. Well, it's like, mm, you're not in a good position to let it all burn, my friend. He's, uh, you're not going to take the lion's share of what's being built afterwards. You're going to be the one that gets sacrificed <laughs> during the burning. It's always the poor people that get fucked by every instability, every massive change in society. Rich people benefit all the time. They'll enrich themselves. So you have to escape the rat race one way or another. There's no choice. Don't drown yourself out in all the vices that men use today, all the hedonism, the materialism, the consumerism. Go touch some grass, go have some thoughts, write them down in the notes app of your phone, how to get out of the trap, the nine to five, because it doesn't serve you anymore. They treat you like an animal. You're just there to collect a paycheck. They show no loyalty. They'll get rid of you whenever they feel like it, whenever it makes sense for their bottom line. There is no more putting in 40, 50 years with a company and getting a little golden parachute, a slap on the back plaque on the wall, you know, a little metal and shit. That's all gone, bro. We live in a like international society now. We have global markets. You don't do your fucking job, they'll just move off to somewhere else and they'll get somebody to do your job for you at a quarter of the price. It is what it is. I had a coworker that worked for our company for 44 years. I asked him what he was going to retire because after 30 years of service, you qualify for a full pension. He said, I'll retire when my wife drops dead. She has stage four cancer. As it turns out, he died shortly after our conversation and never took his pension, and his wife is still living. I don't want to be anything like him. So that has inspired me to retire when it's time or as soon as possible. As someone said, save money from that job, pay towards your dreams. In reality, you go to sleep 27 years old and you wake up 35. Man, ain't that the truth. When I was 19 working in kitchens, I used to see 60-year-olds washing dishes. I knew at that point exactly what I didn't want to be. Amen. Thoughts on this episode below? Give him a like, a follow, a subscribe, and uh, links will be in the description. It's I am Regis. Hopefully he gets a nice little boost from you guys. Monetize his channel, maybe start changing his life. Young, smart man has got a good mentality. All the youngins should be thinking like this. Always, always, like they say, have some motion toward your dreams because no one else is coming to save you. You got to save yourself. Take care, everybody.